It's about that time of day again, isn't it? Back in the action here once again. Always great to be with you guys and gals on this nightly newsletter. It's June the 11th, 2019. My name is Joseph, by the way. And as always, this is your nightly newsletter. Now, don't forget, guys, my job is to help traders find high-quality, dependable, reliable trade setups. And to do that, I use a simple three-step trading strategy that we teach and trade together every morning in our trade room. But my job tonight is a little bit different. My job tonight is to identify the best levels, the best setups, the best situations that I'm looking for tomorrow. That's Wednesday's trading session. And we'll get a lot to cover here tonight. We'll talk about the calendar for tomorrow. We'll cover all the markets, oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro is on the schedule for tonight's video. I'm gonna jump into the oil first of all tonight because direction is pretty easy on oil right now ahead of tomorrow big news tomorrow but location is everything it's all about where we are right now on this black gold that texas tea so let's jump into that oil chart first of all here this evening and i do apologize i am running a few minutes behind schedule had some internet issues here in the office but i couldn't leave you guys hanging much longer want to make sure we get this video done as quickly as possible here for you guys tonight bottom line is looking at oil right now it's pretty easy to see that oil is a bear market at this point anytime i have a bear market. I always want to find levels of resistance to sell off of. I've got a couple key levels of resistance that we'll talk more about in tonight's video. But most important thing right now is we are right back inside of that same trading range, right around $53 a barrel. And of course, this range has been on our radar here for quite some time. We talked about it last night on the newsletter. And of course, anytime I'm inside of a trading range, I can buy low, I can sell high, and obviously, because momentum is bearish right now, I'd much rather want to be a seller, right? Selling up in areas of resistance. I've got two, maybe three different patterns I'm watching for to be a seller down here, but to be a buyer, right? How do we buy off of this low? Being a buyer, there is one very specific pattern that I'm always watching for a counter trend reversal back into that trading range. So if you're trading oil, tomorrow ahead of that weekly inventory report you definitely want to make sure you stay tuned for that strategy tonight on the video over on the S&P S&P big big clues tonight S&P and the Nasdaq are both setting up for what I kind of call a hidden range right it's, it's almost like a developing range the markets are this this market in particular I should say is doing things that usually results in a range bound market so it's kind of like a anticipating a range or a hidden range and that is Anytime we see a strong move up in one direction, we expect to see that second leg. Well, when that second leg clearly gets rejected off that high, right, how strong that rejection is, that's a huge clue. And usually what it tells me is, is it usually tells us that the low, right, the deepest part of that pullback is usually going to be the beginning of, or, or the low of, of a potential new trading range. So we're starting to think that this market now might be trading inside of a range in here, which means I'm looking for this move to go back up to retest these highs. Now, easier said than done, right? In, in case you weren't paying attention today, we finished off the session today with a really strong move down but there are some really big clues down here which we'll talk about in just a few moments on this because I've got one very specific setup that I'm watching for right now we're not quite there yet because this momentum is just too strong right but this one particular setup I'm watching for here right now to be a buyer on this and of course at the same time though what does it take for me to be a seller what would I need to see to be a seller? I'll talk more about tonight, right? What I need to see in order for me to flip this and decide this is not a range and it's time to be a seller. Because right now, we are at a critical standing point right now on both the S&P, right, and that NASDAQ. And of course, we'll talk more about details on how to buy it, how to sell it, and my overall plan here for tomorrow's trading session. Speaking of tomorrow, look at the NASDAQ right now. NASDAQ is very similar 
on the S&P. Again, we had a very strong move up. Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we know the odds are pretty good. They're going to get that retest of the high. When that retest is obviously rejected like this, that creates a double top. That double top usually tips me off to that being the low, right? The deepest part of the pullback between the two tops. That gives me a big heads up that this is now showing signs, right, of a of a range, right? And of course, on a range, I want to buy low, I want to sell high. So I'm looking for a buy, right? I'm looking to get long here, going back up, right, to the high of that trading range. Again, though, just like the S&P, the problem is this is not a bull market. It's very much a bear market right now, and I've got to respect the momentum of these bears. There's one particular type of setup I'm watching for right now to get me long off of these lows. I'm also looking for potential clues to be a seller here tomorrow. And we'll talk about kind of which patterns and what I'm looking for to be a seller on this as well. And of course, as you can see here, we got a nice channel setting up here as well. So I've, I've really got a lot of great information on this chart right now. We really need to look for really one of two different situations tomorrow to confirm on this before we can do anything. Over on the goal tonight, bull Boy, we talked about this last night, right, on the yellow metal here. Remember last night's newsletter, we were stuck inside that narrow, narrow range. And we talked about, right, when it's a real narrow range like this, you want to use the triple deviation, right, and buy because you want to get a good risk-reward ratio. Well, obviously, if you follow along with last night's newsletter, you were prepared to wait. You were prepared to know what to expect down there. And sure enough, everything we talked about last night pretty much came to fruition here today we see a strong one two three reversal off of that low the bulls definitely have the momentum right now but <laughs> we're right back inside that range again so i've really got to be careful here you know just like we talked about on oil when it comes to a range like this i can buy low i can sell high so i definitely want to be a buyer right i definitely want to buy this thing as it pulls back and i've got i've got probably three different patterns that we can use to buy on that pullback but really the, the the kind of the hard parts going to be is can I sell this market right or or as it goes higher here what would I need to see to be a buyer as it goes higher but then what if I don't get that? Can I sell it back down? Absolutely. I'm definitely looking for clues. I'm definitely looking for clues that I can be a buyer on this. I'm also watching, though, to go up and sell it back down. And there are two distinct clues you'll look for tomorrow so you know when it's time, again, whether we're buying it or we're selling it as it goes high. So a lot of, a lot of different things we're watching for right now on gold. We're going to dig into that a lot more here tonight on this video and boy last night we talked about is it a pullback is the reversal right very obviously very choppy day today on the euro you can definitely tell between brexit and trade deals the euro continues to be very choppy and sloppy here and uh you might notice too right i'm not just ditching markets that aren't moving very well if you get in the habit of chasing after markets the, the key is is get to know a couple markets sometimes they work right sometimes they move well sometimes they don't when a market like the euro is not moving well this strategy works on any other market which is great because I can apply it to anything else that's moving well so you know just just avoid that temptation to just ditch a market that isn't moving today because again it's all about learning the market's personality well personality right now is range bound here on this euro I think it's pretty easy to see here that these bears right they came down they tried once they tried twice and buyers are definitely buying off that pullback like we mentioned in last night's newsletter. The problem is they're not really getting anywhere right now, right? Buyers are buying low, but they're really stuck inside this trading range. It's an overall bullish market, right? With that bullish market, I want to be a buyer underneath this range. I've got two patterns I'm watching for to be a buyer underneath the range. And I'll tell you right now, we're bullish. I like to have a buy opportunity as we go higher here, but you'll notice it's very difficult to find a way to kind of thread the needle right now on that euro to be a buyer. So at this point, I've got to wait for either proof of the breakout, 
we'll talk about we'll, we'll, we'll talk about what, what what exactly that means tonight or I've got to sell this thing back down in and we'll talk about how to sell off this high as well so we got a lot to cover here tonight we got the euro we got some gold NASDAQ and the S&P with those hidden ranges and of course right we got crude oil getting ready for tomorrow's right weekly inventory report now before we jump into these charts though and put this plan together for tomorrow's trading session I just want to make sure to remind you to join our mailing list that way you never miss a great video on our blog because right before I publish this video every evening here on YouTube I'm always right I'm always sure to send out an email to all of our best clients on our mailing list. That way you get the first heads up when our new stuff becomes available. Now it's easy to join the mailing list and I promise I'll never spam, sell, or rent the information. I only want to get it so I can send you all the good stuff every evening so you know what's going on here at the School of Trade community. To join the list, all I need is your name, your email address, and then hit that subscribe now button. And don't forget, when you hit that button subscribe now your job is not over you still need to go in and check your email inbox because I'm going to send you a welcome email and inside that welcome email there'll be a verification link so you can give me approval to keep emailing you and a bunch of good stuff in that welcome email, a bunch of goodies so you and I can get the most working together every evening and please don't forget sometimes those emails they get stuck in your spam filter so if you don't see the email anytime you register for our list or you join our free classes you've always got to go in and verify your email and sometimes those emails get stuck in your spam filter so check the spam filter the junk folder the promotions folder right it'll probably be there and if you do find it there make sure you whitelist us here at school of trade that we always get the good stuff every step along the process now also one more thing here don't forget i need a couple moments of your time below this video in the comment section Give me a couple minutes of your time and give me some feedback. What do you love about the newsletter? What do you hate about the newsletter? If you were in charge over here, what would you change, right? Would you do one market before the others? Would you remove one of these markets? Would you add a new market, right? What's your favorite market? How do you use the newsletter? What's the most important part of this video for you? What can I do more of? What should I do less of on this video to make this the best place to learn and earn? It would mean the world to me if you took a few moments out of your busy schedule. Give me some feedback in the comment section below. That way I can always make sure I'm improving this video lesson. And while you're down there in the comment section, right, give me a thumbs up on the video. If you watch this video every evening, Monday through Thursday evening, give me a thumbs up on the video tonight because that goes so far at helping me expose this video and this channel to other traders who need this help as well. So help me out. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. That way you're always tuned in with the good stuff, right, and more traders can learn about this lesson as well. And don't forget, don't forget, I want to remind you guys too, you can always call me anytime you have any questions I have a toll-free phone number up there in the upper right hand corner that live support tool will also ring right to my desktop as well so please feel free to reach out call me call that toll-free phone number I realize that most websites these days are automated robots and chat widgets and nobody wants to really talk to people anymore I guess I'm old school right when you call my office I pick up the phone I love to talk to my clients and Answer all your questions so if you have any questions about brokers data charting software maybe our free trial or our free pass to our trade room or our free training classes just pick up the phone and call me there and I'd be happy to guide you through the entire process but in the meantime though you did not come here for that you came here for the good stuff for tomorrow's trading session let's do it let's roll those sleeves up right and let's get this party rolling here tomorrow is hump day right middle of the week monday tuesday wednesday tomorrow morning now of course we've talked about this last night on the newsletter this is the second week of the month markets do tend to be a little bit floundering on the second week of the month there really isn't any big standout news right this week so we are still 
tuning in right now to trade deals with the U.S., Mexico, China, Europe, Brexit. There's a lot of different things that are kind of running just under the surface of these markets right now. So we've always we've we've obviously got our got our eyes and ears open for those kind of unscheduled news reports that we know are likely going to find their way in here. We continue to hear about the U.S. and China. We continue to hear about Brexit. We continue to hear about all of these different things that are certainly, again, kind of underpinning these markets right now in addition to. So tomorrow morning in our trade room, we'll be keeping our eyes and ears open for any unscheduled news. And don't forget, we get together every morning, Monday through Friday at 8 o'clock Eastern time to trade the, right, to trade the strategy together. Now, tomorrow, we've got two big news events tomorrow. We get the CPI number at 8.30. Now, remember, any time you talk about an index, right, consumer price index, producer price index, right, any time you've got an eye on the end, those indexes, they usually deal with inflation, and inflation means dollar, and dollar means currencies, and gold, right, metals, things like that. So tomorrow morning, you're definitely thinking euro, you're thinking gold, or any other precious metal, any other currency-related product. Don't forget oil, right? Oil, of course is directly related to the dollar index as well. So this has a lot of ripples into the market tomorrow, bright and early at 8.30 Eastern time. And again, you know, we open up our trade room every morning at 8 a.m. Eastern time, Monday through Friday. And so we'll have a front row seat for that tomorrow morning. Now, speaking of crude oil, right, we got to get that oil moving early tomorrow off that CPI number because as we get later in the session, we've got that weekly inventory report right the petroleum status report most commonly known right as the weekly inventory report now i'll be very very honest i i'll tell my i tell my clients the same thing i'll tell you right now there is plenty of time to trade oil you've got monday tuesday thursday friday before news you got after news stay away from the inventory report. Very, very difficult to predict direction. De very difficult to rely on the initial reaction of that report. My best advice to a new oil trader is save your money, right? Remove that stressful environment from your, right, from your trading week and focus on trading around it. What I mean by this is, is on Wednesday mornings, I typically look for setups on crude oil until about 10 o'clock in the morning and then after that news comes out usually it's about 10 minutes afterwards and we'll wait until about 10 40 and then look for setups afterwards so really it's that 40 45 minute window there and you know and again you're more than welcome to try to trade after 10 o'clock but you'll see for yourself it's very slow after 10 o'clock usually on Wednesdays because nobody wants to be trading that market and again it's very difficult to trade the actual inventory report because it's very illiquid stops will not hold it's really a very dangerous situation and, and again like I mentioned earlier we have a strategy that works on all the different markets so you know pick some other market you want to trade between 10 o'clock and 1040 maybe one of the markets we talk about tonight on this video newsletter so be careful tomorrow around that weekly inventory report we got big news tomorrow at 8.30 from the CPI number. And then again, if you're an oil trader, it only applies to oil, that'd be 10.30 tomorrow morning. And again, that cutoff is really about 10 o'clock on a Wednesday if you are an oil trader. I also want to give you a heads up. I'll come back tomorrow night, obviously, for tomorrow night's newsletter, but there will not be a newsletter on Thursday evening. I'm going to be out of the office on Thursday evening for a very special special event uh, with some family of mine. So unfortunately, I won't be in the office on Thursday evening to send out that nightly newsletter. I always feel bad leaving you guys hanging. But you know, there are some things in life that are more important, right, than trading. I would encourage you to make sure you prioritize your life as well. I love trading. I love being here with you guys. But again, there are certain times in life that you just simply can't get back. And it's important that you use those times wisely, right? Don't squander away. There'll be plenty of 
time to look at charts. So just be aware, no newsletter on Thursday night. So tomorrow night, last newsletter of the week. And then, of course, I'll come back to my normal schedule on Monday of next week. All right, looking good here. Let's jump into those charts here right now. Jumping into charts here as we open up in Asia, I'm going to go oil, S&P, NASDAQ, right, gold, and euro. I do realize I'm running a bit late here for you guys tonight, so I will try to keep it relatively brief here right now. Starting off with the oil, we know we are bearish here right now on the oil market. We're rolling lower. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of different types of support and resistance that you can use right now. I think I've got it nailed down to what most people are probably going to be using for tomorrow, but I'm not gonna lie. There could be a lot of other different variations of the channel, of the measured moves, of the ranges that you're seeing me use here, but I think these will be the most reliable because as you can tell, this oil is very, very choppy right now. You can definitely tell that the uh, a few weeks ago we heard about the sanctions in Iran. Those 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 oil sanctions, right? Uh, you know, against the. Uh, 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 the Iranian oil industry is rippling into all the other markets right now. And it's, it's really creating a bit of a shakeup here. And that's what's really resulting in this choppy kind of uh, uh, almost like paranoid market, you know, almost uh, you know, jittery price action that we saw a good example of today. The bottom line, though, is we know we are bearish, right? This bearish market tells me I want to be a seller at resistance. I've drawn a trend line off of these lows. I brought it up to those highs. And so I would like to look for a sell right up around the high of that channel. Now, that's very, very important because we're also, not only are we bearish here, but we're also back inside of a trading range right now. And of course, anytime I'm inside a trading range, I always know you're not going to get very good setups. You're not going to get very reliable price action inside of that range. And as I mentioned inside in the, in the uh, introduction here tonight, Anytime I have myself inside of a range like this, I always know I've got basically three jobs. One is to sell high, two is to buy low, and the third, obviously, right, is to avoid the middle. Buy low, sell high, and avoid the middle. Now, I know I'm bearish, right? We know we're bearish right now. So being a bear market, I'd like to come up and actually sell off that high. So here are two potential setups that I'm watching for right now as the market rolls higher. If we do, there's really two different ways this market will likely pull back. One would be, right, a nice strong, right, short covering rally. Profit taking off the low, the market bounces higher. As the market bounces higher now, as we go higher here, I'm going to get that moving average coming over. Those buyers are likely here going to try to sell or try to buy into that pullback. And when they do, I now know right where their stops are and I can sell right into those stop losses, right? I call this a failure pattern. And it makes sense, right? We're inside the range. It's a bearish bias on the chart right now. We go up. The buyers here try to buy the pullback. We know where their stops are, and we're simply selling right into those buyer stop losses, right? Called a failure setup. And again, that setup, right? We want to wait for those buyers to commit to that long position, right? And of course, we'll look to sell right into those stops for the failure. Now, we also like to look for a potential two-legged pullback. Imagine now the market goes up, pulls back and goes up again. This is a very this is a very similar pullback but very different as you can see, right? Now I'm going to draw a trend line up off that low and now that trend line becomes my biggest, right? My 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 best resource, right? Now I want to sell Again, I call this a two-legged pullback or a 2LP, right? You'll hear in my trade room, right? And that is a one-leg, a two-leg, right? Two-legged pullback. Draw that trend line up the, up the underbelly of that, right, of that trend line, and then we try to use it for that sell, right, off the high. Now, a lot of times what happens on this particular setup is the moving average will come over, and you'll be able to get kind of a double whammy, right? It's a... It's a two-legged pullback 
into a failure pattern, right? So kind of the same pattern we talked before, but now you're doing it after, right, that two-legged pullback pattern. So there are two setups I'm watching for, right, as we as we make a run higher. Now, speaking of going higher, how do we know when the market reverses, right? What does the reversal look like? You know, speaking of going higher, how, do, how would we know it's time to be a buyer? Well, first of all, we have to see a real strong move up. Once we see a strong move up, now the moving average comes over and the buyers have to buy off that moving average and give us a strong, strong run, okay? Notice here, right? Look back in time here. We saw one earlier this morning, right? A strong move up. Notice how the buyers were unable to continue that move, right? That's how you know it's not a reversal, right? Once they try to get to that high, what happens? It falls right back down. And of course, sellers are waiting there to sell right into those stops. Okay. So the first thing is we've got to see a strong move up. Once we see that strong move up, wait for the pullback here now, and then look for that jump off the moving average. I call this a one, two, three reversal or a one, two, three breakout in certain situations as well. Now, what do we do with that? We're not trying to buy way up here. We're going to mark up this high right here. Let's get that off there. Then mark up that high. And that's going to create what we call a hidden channel, right? Hidden channel. Now, bring it down to that low. Bring it off that low now. And now that creates that sweet spot, right? That sweet spot now is where I now want to be buying that pullback. Now, these patterns, I'm going to warn you, these can be tricky because it's very tempting, right? It's very tempting to want to buy that first pullback, right? The problem is that first pullback, it's not a bull market. It's a bear market. It's not a very reliable setup. What will happen is, is once you see this market jump, all of that patience will pay off because you can draw that trend line off the high, mark up that low, and I'll tell you, usually that pullback happens pretty darn quickly. So make sure you stay patient early in the process, but then make sure you act quickly when that market pulls back to retest that low. Where is the target overhead for these buyers? The target overhead for the buyers will be a retest, right, of that high here up at 5480 if they can get it going higher. Again, don't right. Don't assume though. Don't assume though that these that these uh, these buyers again will hold that pullback. Now, as we open up in Asia right now, what if the market goes lower, right? What's our best bet as it goes lower? There are really two scenarios you want to look for when a market breaks below a range like this. Remember, it's a range down here. So we have to think that unless we get some great evidence of this, we're going to probably end up right back into that range. So what are two scenarios? How would I know to sell it and how, how would I know to buy it? Well, let's talk about buying it first, right? Being a buyer below the low of a trading range, we are clearly bearish right now. And because we are bearish, I have to give the sellers the respect that they've earned. Not that they deserve, they earned it, right? The sellers have full control of this market right now. So just because I have a range doesn't mean I can count on buying this thing right now. Here's what you want to see. Now, we talked about a buyer failure pattern, right? Literally selling into the stop losses of the buyers above the range, right? It's going to be a similar pattern to that, but as we go lower, because we're already bullish, sorry, because we're already bearish, I have to give the sellers a couple attempts here to sell before I can be a buyer, okay? This is where we like to use the two-try rule. I want the sellers to show me evidence, show me proof. They try to sell the pullback once, they try to sell the pullback twice, okay? Once I see those sellers trying once, trying twice, and I don't see them successful, now I look for the appropriate signal candle, and I can buy right back up into that trading range. Okay, make sense? As I go higher because the market's bearish, all I need are the buyers to try once to buy that pullback and I can sell because it's bearish, right? I can be relatively aggressive on that. As the market goes lower though, I've gotta be a lot more conservative. Wait once, wait twice, and then go from there. 
And again, what I'm doing is I've got my eyes on where those stops are. I'm looking for a nice strong signal candle, right? The moving average will be like this, and I want to see it running back up into that range, right? I call this a nested two try failure pattern. But what about a sell, right? What's a breakout look like? A breakout, remember the breakout above? The one, two, three breakout, remember that? Or that reversal? This, of course, would be a one, two, three breakout. So if we see it go one, pull back, and this is why you don't want, this is why you don't want to try to buy into it, because a lot of times that second, right, that second shot, a lot of times they'll come in and they'll just run you right over. So you don't want to be trying to buy that until they fail twice, but if we can get that run off the moving average, and again, this is where it takes some patience. Believe me, I don't want to have to wait and, you know, I don't want to have to miss that breakout. The problem, though, is, is that most breakouts fail. They're not reliable setups. So once I see it go lower, which you can see it's setting up right now, pulls back to the moving average, then a strong run off. Now I know that range is no longer in play any longer. I'm going to mark up that low. I'm going to mark up this low. And then remember, it's up to these highs up here. Draw that channel off of those highs. And now we know right where the sweet spot is. Now we know right where, right, we can sell up around those highs. It's called a one, two, three breakout or a one, two, three reversal. Now, where would my target be here for these bears? Great question. The pendulum swing. The pendulum swing makes for a great target here right now because remember, the amount of the move, remember this is that range we talked about a few weeks ago. The amount of the the amount of the move above the range is oftentimes the amount of the move below the range. So if we do get that one, two, three, this obviously is not drawn to scale over here. Just so you can see what I'm talking about, then we know we're trying to sell off that high, right? And that and that pendulum swing, right, is really where I'm looking for that big objective right now. And then who knows? From there, we may see it one, two, and right back up into that range tomorrow. So we'll definitely be keeping our eyes open on that for crude oil. So boy, we have covered a lot here tonight. We talk about a failure pattern, a nested two try failure, two-legged pullbacks, pendulum swings. Boy, if you're here for the first time right now, all of this terminology might be a little bit difficult to, right, to, to keep up with. So here's what I want to do. I want to give you access to a free trading class inside the member section here at schooltrade.com, right? That highly coveted membership course that everyone loves, wants to become a client. I'm going to put a link in the upper right-hand corner here for you guys. I'll also put a big red button right below the video tonight to register for our free trading class. Now, if you're here for the first time or maybe you just haven't registered yet, the bottom line is as part of that free trading class, you'll learn my three-step strategy. You'll learn my four favorite entry patterns. You'll see hundreds of examples of real setups, different chart lessons, so you can really get your arms around and really get the most out of our time together here every evening on this nightly newsletter. So don't worry, pause the video, grab that link, get registered for that free class, and like I mentioned earlier, don't forget, whenever we register, make sure you check your spam folder because it may get stuck in that spam filter right with your welcome email. All right, guys, running forward here now, running forward forward here. Let's keep going. You guys register for the free class. I'm going to keep teaching this lesson here tonight. And then of course, I'll join you when you come back. Now, jumping in on the S&P right now. First of all, as we mentioned in last night's newsletter, we are watching rollover. It's not right now. We're not watching rollover right now. But I think the next couple days here, you're going to start seeing rollover start to take effect here, probably towards the end of this week. Maybe not tomorrow, but, you know, Thursday or Friday, I would expect to see some rollover on the S&P 500. We'll talk in a lot more detail about that tomorrow night on the newsletter. Just be aware, we are watching. This is the 619, the 919 contract, right? The September 2019 contract is up next here, and we'll talk more, more details on that in tomorrow night's newsletter when I'm not so late here on the video tonight. Now, we talked about this earlier, right? We talked about this earlier. Strong run up to start the week. A pull back, right? A pull back, a retest of that high. What happens? They completely get rejected off of that high, okay? In most situations, that double top creates a trading range. 
Now, what does a range tell me to do? A range tells me to buy low, right? Buy low. The problem I have right now is, is momentum is way too bearish right now right? Momentum is way too bearish right now for me to want to buy this market. It's a lot like trying to buy the low of that range on oil, right? It's just way too bearish to buy right now. And I have to make sure, right, I'm looking for a very specific entry setup. Now, knowing that, we just talked about that nested failure pattern on oil, right? As we go down, because we're so bearish, the only way that I can safely be a buyer on this is if I can get these bears to try how many times? Twice. I've already got them trying once. I need to see evidence of a second. And then what I'll do is I'm going to draw that trend line here and look to buy right off that, right off the trend line, off a trap level. I'm looking for really any way to buy off support. The, the, the only thing right now, though, is, is I've got the first try here. I need a second try, right? I need these bears to show me they're trying again. Because if I don't, I can't trust it, right, to buy it. Now, the hard part about this is going to be if it just kind of flounders around down here, right? You can definitely see it's kind of just sitting right here right now. So really, if we make a run lower, what you're kind of thinking right now is, is really one of two scenarios. Do we run and bounce or do we run and go? Those are really the two big scenarios you want to think about right now. Ideally, ideally, we want to see it one, we want to see it two, right? Get those bears trying once, trying twice, draw that trend line up, and then buying off of that low, right? It's that nested two try failure pattern. At the same time though, right, let's plan for what if we roll lower here? Right? What if we roll lower? If we roll over, right? If we roll lower here, let's dig in a little bit deeper on this. Let's get rid of that here. Let's get rid of this just since you know where that level is right now. And let's pretend for a moment now we run lower and we bounce off that low. Won't surprise me whatsoever. If we run lower and we bounce off that low, that's a big milestone for the sellers. It's a big accomplishment, believe it or not, for those sellers. Because honestly, a rising support trend line in a bear market is basically bear repellent, as I always kind of joke around with you guys, right? If I have a higher low in a bear market like this and I see a trend line coming up, bears are not going to want to sell low, right? It's very difficult for the bears at that point, which gives me that little edge that I need. You're kind of backing yourself into a corner there where the bears can't get at you, right? The bears aren't going to run. They're not going to sell into that trend line. If we, if we retest that low, well, now that trend line's gone. Now the edge is gone. Now the only thing we have is, is a range. And so at this point now, what would, it, what would I be looking for to be a buyer here? We're still bearish, which means I still need to get the one, but now the two, I need to get some, some edge here. And the only edge I'm going to have at that point is going to be a crown reversal. Crown reversal patterns, they look like nested failures. But again, let me, let me one more time, right? As we go here, we bounce off that low and get that higher high. That gives me an edge now because the sellers, they have a hard time getting through it. And I can exploit that edge by, or I exploit that by buying into those stops. Okay, if I get a retest of that low, now I don't have that edge anymore, right? If they retest that low, now I don't have that edge. And so now I do still want to buy off this low, but I still got to go out and find some sort of edge. It's too bearish, right? I want to buy low the range. So what looking for now is, is one try for the bears, two try for the bears, and ideally is the very least is a double bottom there. Goal would be a trap low below that low. That's one try, that's two try, nice strong signal, right? And we're back into that range. So really at this point, it's just kind of a waiting game to see what we get. If it bounces, if it bounces off that low, right? Bounces off that low, we're still in the ball game, but we're definitely more bearish than we are right now. That, that's just the reality. Now, what if it goes lower? What if it goes through the low? If it goes through the low, there's probably going to be a lot of stops waiting down here. I would imagine a lot of buyers probably have their stops sitting down there. So you're kind of looking for some follow through, right? As it goes lower, do we sit inside this range 
right? Because this range, if you recall, this is the range from late last week. It seems ridiculous that we're talking about late last week right now, but that's the deal, right? It could go right back into that range. Do we go into the range and rattle around, right? If that's the case, then it's the same thing we talk about for oil, right? So if we end up back inside the range and we're just kind of rattling around down here, now it's just a bear market inside of a range. And so what do we do? We go up, we, we sell into buyer failures, right? We go down, we use that, what was it again? That nested, right? That one, that two, again, because it's a bear market, right? Let them try once, let them try twice, and then we're buying back up from there. So that's a scenario I'm watching here for tomorrow. Or, right, or does this thing just collapse, right? And look for that one, two, three reversal. Fine by me, as long as we don't get stuck rattling around inside this range down here, if this thing just pummels lower, mark that low, mark that low, mark that high, right? And we're, and we're going to try to sell this thing, right, off of that move. Remember, though, right, it's got to be a strong move down, hold the pullback, and then that leg, right, that third leg, that one, two, three, there's an exclamation point on it. It's got to be a real, real strong move. That target now, boy, oh boy, there is some remarkable space here right now for this thing to run back lower here. So we'll have to play it by ear and see right where that may be because I'll tell you right now, there's potential. This could be a monster, right, monster move down with that pendulum swing back around that 55 area there. So it could really be a bloodbath tomorrow if this thing can, can again, push through that trading range. Right now, though, we're pinned right at the low of this range right now. I've got a great plan here for be a buyer. I'm just simply waiting to see what we're going to get here for tomorrow, at least in the next few hours in the overnight session. Over on the NASDAQ, NASDAQ is in a very similar position, but honestly, the NASDAQ has a definite clue that is very easy to see on this chart that the S&P does not. And you can definitely see it here, right? So obviously, we see a strong move up. Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, do not be surprised. It pulls back and retests that high, but it doesn't go through the high. What happens? It gets rejected at the high, right? Strong move up, pull back, ouch, right? They try, they try, and they get rejected, right? Whenever, they, whenever the highs get rejected like that, it creates kind of this little, again, like I called it, right? Kind of like a hidden range, right? It's like a hidden range. And you can see what happened, right? It fell pretty easily down to the low of that range. And now we're kind of sitting there right now. Now, the reason why we're sitting there is because the buyers are buying down here and the sellers are selling, right? The buyers are going, no, it's a range. Buy, right? The sellers are going, it's not a range. What's bearish? Sell. And so buyers are buying low, sellers are selling high, and the market kind of skids sideways here right now. Now, I think there's also a big clue here. If you line up those highs up here, mark up that low, you can see, boy, they bounced right off that, right off that level. So, you know, this is, I would, I, I, this makes an excellent add-on. It makes an excellent additional item, but I wouldn't ever just trade that channel because it's so wide. But when you combine the low of this hidden range, right, along with that hidden channel here, it, it, very is, it is very much convincing, isn't it? right? Again, I wouldn't get in the habit of just relying on these really wide, wide ranges or wide channels. Because remember, anytime you have a wide, wide channel like this, that momentum is so strong by the time it comes off this high that you just, you, you, you have a hard time trading the low of that channel because it's going to want to keep going lower. So again, we know we're bearish, but we know we're sitting at what is probably going to be the low, right, of this, right, of this hidden range. So we got a hidden channel on there. We definitely know about that. What's the best way to trade this? It's very, very similar now to what we talked about on the S&P. Big strong move down. I want to buy this thing to go back up to retest the high. I've got the sellers trying once, but I need to see them trying again. And then once I can get those sellers trying a second time up here, we were already at the first try, once I can get those bears trying a second time, well, now I've got my trend line in here, right? And I can buy off, again, buying off that support level there. 
Now, the ideal scenario would be that crown reversal, right? We see a second try. We run down for a trap low. That crown reversal pattern, right? Reversal patterns are tough. I only like to use a handful of reversal setups, and I talk about most of them inside of that free trading class that I mentioned earlier. So make sure you, t uh, you know, make sure you get registered on that. And again, check your spam folder, right, for that email verification when you do so. So again, we've got the first try. I want to see a second try, and then I can go look into buy. Just make sure, you know, whether or not we use a trend line, right, whether or not it's this trend line, whether it's this trend line. I just want to make sure I see them once, twice, and then again, buying again off that support area because you always want to make sure you're buying off support in these situations because the sellers are going to be selling high, right? They're not going to, they're not going to be buying, right, as the market goes lower. They won't, won't be selling, I should say, into that, into that support level. Now, again, we mentioned earlier, right, if the market goes lower and bounces, now it's a one, a two, right? I still want to see that one, that two, right? And ideally, that trap and that run back up. What do we call those? Again, crown reversals. It's a variation of a nested failure pattern. You'll learn more about the terminology, right, in our video classes, especially that free trading class. Or, right, do we make a run for it? One, two, three, big move down. I'm perfectly fine selling this thing, but I've got to see proof, right? I've got to see proof. It's just too much you can't trust this area to sell yet. You've got to wait to see that proof. And believe me, I know, I know it's not fun. It's not fun to have to watch that trade go without you. The problem is that's only about a 35% reliability there, right? I'd much rather be upwards around the 75, 78% reliability that we get on the next setup. Remember, trading is nothing more than pattern recognition and probabilities. That's all it is, right? Just like you walk into a casino and you go, okay, I'm going to choose to stay away from the slots, right? And I'll choose to play blackjack or vice versa, right? Whichever has the better probabilities of success, right? You want to think smart, right? Think, think, think smart when it comes to choosing which patterns you take, right? Do you want to take a 35% reliable pattern or a 75% reliable pattern? I'll let you decide. It's your money, right? It's your business. Business, okay, I think I know what I would want. I assume I know what you want. But hey, but maybe 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 you like to gamble a little bit with your money by by all means. But if you're serious about the money in your account, be selective as far as which patterns you're trading here. Now, what if the market runs? right? What if it runs higher here? What would be some options as it runs higher? You know, this is always a challenging part because you'll notice I took that trading range and I broke it up into thirds. Right, you may have noticed that, right? One third, one third. Um, anytime I have a really wide range like this, I like to break those up into thirds, and then this kind of creates like a no trade zone, right? The middle third, and you'll be amazed at how often the market will go up. It'll roll around inside that no trade zone, and what happen is the market will kind of shoot lower, and everybody comes in, right, and buys that trap, and that's exactly what I'm going to try to do if the market shoots up as well. A lot of times what happens is the market will shoot up, pull back, and do something like that. I'm going to mark up that low and look for a trap pattern here, right, to buy, again, buy as low as I can get it, but most importantly, buying outside, right, of that kind of chop zone or that no trade zone or the middle of that trading range. So if we do end up going higher, don't chase after it. That's the, it's not easy, believe me, it's not easy. You know, like, like, like I said earlier, you can choose to trade the middle or you can choose to think and act like a professional. Professionals are always considering what's the long-term probability of the setup to give yourself an edge over the opposite side of that market. And then again, if we go right back up to retest these highs, remember, it will be a very bull market. So just like, we, just like trying to buy off this low, I want to sell off the high, I want to respect the buyers, right? Let them try once, let them try twice, and back down. You can see an example here, right? We go up, let them try once, let them try twice, right? That lower low there, buyers try once, buyers try twice, and then the market collapses. So that same basic idea here, right, is what you're looking for 
tomorrow. And again, that would be very late in the session, I would imagine, unless we get this thing to just to jump in the short term. So now we've got a good plan there for the NASDAQ. How about the gold? Gold is probably the easier of the of, of the big five here tonight. You know, we talked about this in great detail last night, but you know, a very good contrast. The the NASDAQ has a very wide range, and so I break that up into thirds. The uh, gold here, the yellow metal, has a very narrow range. Now, the thing you want to remember about a narrow range is risk reward ratio, right? Risk reward. I like to I like to use literally a triple one two three one two three what I call range expansions. Now you'll learn a lot about this stuff in the free trading classes. I go I go way down the rabbit hole in our paid video classes, our membership classes here at School of Trade to really learn how to diagnose, how to mark them up correctly, how to find the range because most people will just be lazy about drawing their range. But when you're lazy about drawing the range, you oftentimes don't get these high quality levels and you don't have the confidence that you have if you take the time to really learn right how these ranges work. You know, the moral of the story though is, is we knew that we were wanting to be away from that range, right? We knew that was probably where you would get the big turn today. Same thing overhead, right, above the range. We didn't get the market going higher, obviously, but we did get that move going lower and then now right back into that range. Beautiful one, two, three reversal. I'm marking up these highs. I'm bringing it down to my lows. I know where my sweet spot is. And I'm just waiting for a pullback right now. I, I really am. I'm waiting for a pullback. This pullback will accomplish a lot of things, really, right? If I can get a pullback right now, it'll allow me to buy the low in a trending move, right? Buying low, buying at support. But at the same time, though, knowing this is a trading range, right? Knowing this is a trading range, I don't want to trade the middle. I want to get outside that range buy into those failures, right, and bring it right back up. And that's exactly what I'm looking for here on this yellow metal, right? I want to see us pull back. I want to see that moving average come over. Get those sellers to try to sell off the moving average. And of course, at that point now, we know exactly, right, where those stops are. And if I'm lucky on this, I'll get a failure into a pullback combination. These are one of my favorite ways to do it, right? It's a failure pattern. The bears try to sell. They fail for a failure setup to long, right, to buy. But then oftentimes the pullback happens right there afterwards and you can kind of double up your position or like what I do is I'll take a quick first target on the move up and then look to buy that next pullback, right, as it goes to add to it, right, or to get back in as it pulls back. So those are two patterns I'm watching for right now. Obviously, right, as the market goes higher here, though, I really don't want to buy high, do I? You know, there's a couple different things you can look at right now, but you know, the, the, the kind of the most reliable thing I'm looking for right now is as we go up, get up into that area here, Again, expect to see a pendulum swing. The amount of the move below the range is the amount of the move above the range, right? So we know where they're trying to go. We also know this area up here is probably where this thing wants to go right now. So if it does run up, remember, respect the bullish momentum. Make sure the buyers try once. Make sure they try twice. And then I can sell. Where's my target? My target is right back down, right, into that range again. Right back down into that range. Just make sure those buyers clearly try once, clearly try twice. Then we can sell right into those stop losses. But how could you buy this, right? Could you buy it is there anything you could look for here to be a buyer? Absolutely, you can. It's called a two-try breakout. So it's a strong move up, and then as long as you can do it before we get up into this 37 area, what you're looking for is, is a one, a two, and a trap low for a buy. This will be pretty quick. It'll happen fast, right? It'll be a strong move up. The profit takers will take profit. Then the sellers will come in. They'll try to sell that little trap high up there, and you're waiting right below that low with a strong signal candle. Now, obviously, you do not want to do this here, right? Not the time to do it. You've already missed it up there. So you want to see a strong move up, profit-taking, 
higher high, bears come in, right? And again, because you're worried about buying high up here, most likely you'll want to see a trap set up, right, to be a buyer. It has to start with a strong break higher, though. It's got to start with a strong break higher. If you don't have a strong break higher, you won't be able to rely on it, right? You just won't be able to. All right, guys? So that's how you can buy that market. And then as we go lower, don't forget, I'm still open-minded for a one, two, three, right? One, two, three. But, you know, good example, right? We saw a big move down early today. It, it needs to hold that pullback, and it never did, right? And so because it doesn't, right, we know it's not a, it's, it's not a breakout. We knew this area was going to be tough for us here. So it needs to go one, two, three, and really run, right? It's got to show me proof. Then I can go out and find right, that low, that hidden channel, and we can sell right off of that, off that sweet spot. So very much of the same stuff here. I want to look for a pullback right now here on gold. I want to be aware that as it goes higher, you've got to get into it quickly here if you want that breakout, or it goes up one, two, and then dumping back in. Buy low, sell high, avoid the middle, fade those breakouts. And again, we cover a lot of range stuff inside that free trading class. So make sure you uh, familiarize yourself with trading ranges because ranges, balanced markets, sideways markets are very common in today's world. And it's very important that you learn the right way to trade them. Last but not least here, over on the Euro, talked about this earlier, right? We have a bull market right now. That bull market is inside of a range. Okay, the hard part is we know that those bulls, they're trying to get up to that measured move, right? They get the one leg, the two leg, so we know where they're trying to go. This is going to be a little bit tricky here right now. Ideally, in a bull market, right, bullish into a trading range right now, ideally what you want is, is you want to pull back, get those sellers to try to sell into it, right and then we're buying right into those failures right that's kind of the idea here on the euro we still haven't hit that trend line that i talked about in last night's newsletter right that trend line coming down so i mean that would be ideal right get a nice strong move down get the moving average coming over let the sellers try to sell into it all they want right and then of course from there we know where stops are and we can buy right into those stop losses the hardest part tomorrow, if it sits right inside the range, right? If we just sit there all day tomorrow, don't touch it. Just wait patiently. The hard part's going to be trying to buy this thing as it goes higher. Because as it goes higher, I've got that measured move. If they can push through the measured move, I have to, I have to assume they're going back to 14,000 because it's a currency we're talking about here. And currencies, they do like those big round numbers. So what's the best way to buy this? To buy it, I really want to see one of one of two situations. Either one would be a strong move up with a one, a two, and a go, right? That that two try breakout. What I what I would expect though is is a one, two, three, right? A break through the measured move. That will then tell you to mark up that high, mark up the high of the channel, bring it down to that low, right? And now we know where we're trying to be a buyer here off the low of that channel. Again, you can try to buy the first pullback, but it, it's up to you. Do you want the lower probability trade or do you want the higher probability trade? There's no first place trophy for the most number of trades. There isn't. Nobody gets an award besides your broker. Your broker gets the trophy for the being the broker of the month because he has all the rookie clients that can't keep their fingers off the darn buttons, right? We all know what that feels like. You think you made some money today, but then you get your broker's email at the end of the day and you're like, what happened to the money I made? Oh, it got chopped up by all the commissions that I paid here today. Even with commissions being low, you're still going to be very, very careful, right, over trading these markets. So wait for that one, two, three get that breakout, right, and buy the pullback. Or it's a strong move up, profit taking, sellers, trap, and go, right? That two try breakout target is, of course, up at that big round number. What I'm more inclined to look for, though, is, is a run up to the measured move, 
knowing that this range is still valid here, the buyers try to buy the pullback once. You can see they're banging their head against that measured move. They try twice. Now at this point, there's a trend line coming down, right? You can sell off a level of resistance at this point. The buyers have very little they can do. They have bought once. They bought twice. They're not getting anywhere. Once you see a nice strong signal going against those buyers, most buyers in that situation, they're going to exit their trade early right just basically out of fear ultimately right they'll exit that trade early and the market will usually drop pretty considerably from there that's called the nested failure pattern right because it goes against the momentum again as we go lower here one two three breakout i have no problem being a seller i just have to see proof right find that channel and we're going down from there where do we go down from there too probably down to that next round number, back to retest that low down around 12,000. It's a currency, and this currency loves big round numbers and will probably end up getting one of them tomorrow, whether it be the 13,000, 14,000, or 12,000, if I can just state the obvious, right? So that's the plan there for the euro. The hardest part tomorrow, I think, will be if the market sits inside that range. So make sure you stay patient on that. And make sure, as I always remind you guys, make sure you come out and join me tomorrow morning, bright and early. We open up our trade room every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, and we're going to execute the entire plan together. Because, you know, we all know there's money to be made every morning. The problem is it's more difficult to apply it on a real chart. The markets can be complicated sometimes, and it really helps to be with me in the trade room looking over my shoulder. That way you can do it right there with me, and I can walk you through the entire process. To get started, to get registered as a brand new client and get ready for tomorrow morning's trading session, just go right below the video tonight here on the website. I'll put all the links in the description of the YouTube video and join as an advanced member. Now, our advanced membership has a one-time opportunity and a payment plan opportunity as well. If you want details on that, pick up the phone, call me in the office. That toll-free phone number here right next to my ugly mug is an easy way to get more information or use that live support tool just below me. And as always, if you're not quite ready yet to become a client, we have one of the best free trials in the business. It includes your free trading class. It includes hundreds of chart examples, right? And as always, right, it includes more information, the three-step strategy, a free pass to our trade room, all the information is included in a video there for that free trial and again if you have any questions don't be afraid to pick up the phone use live support shoot me an email I'm always here standing by but for now though let's get out of here get some rest great job today thanks for sticking around a bit late for me here this evening I know it's a little bit late here to get the video out to you guys but hey right life comes at you fast sometimes it's how you react to it isn't you guys I'll see you guys tomorrow morning bright and early eight o'clock eastern time as always my name is Joseph be well out there, be nice to each other, will you? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.